Well, good morning and welcome back to another Saturday Psalm. My name's Adam Denley. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Today we're going to look at Psalm 11 together. And it raises a couple of really interesting questions for us, this psalm. These are, who is it that you're listening to at the moment? Who is it that has your ear? uh, Psalm 11 presents us with an interesting scenario. King David appears to be under siege. Everything seems to be crumbling from underneath his feet. And advice is being given to the king, presumably by some counsellors around him. I wonder, as I read this psalm, what do you make of their counsel? Psalm 11. For the director of music of David. In the Lord I take refuge. How then can you say to me, flee like a bird to your mountain? For look, the wicked bend their bows. They set their arrows against the strings to shoot from the shadows at the upright in heart. When the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is on his heavenly throne. He observes the sons of men. His eyes examine them. The Lord examines the righteous, but the wicked and those who love violence, his soul hates. On the wicked, he will rain fiery coals and burning sulphur. A scorching wind will be their lot. For the Lord is righteous. He loves justice. Upright men will see his face. David nails his colours right from the mast in Psalm 11 verse 1. He says in verse one, in the Lord, I take refuge in you. He says, I am sure that I'm safe with the promise making, promise keeping God of the Bible. He's confident that his security lies with God. And then look carefully at what comes next. Another voice pipes up. Another voice that seemingly has the ear of the king. And we're asking the question, is this a voice of reason? Is this good advice for God's king? I wonder, what do you make of the counsel? Verse one, flee like a bird to your mountain. For look, the wicked bend their bows. They set their arrows against their strings. They're going to shoot from the shadows. You see, what they're saying is this. The wicked are ready to come and smack you down. Their bow is bent. The arrow's touching the string. And you're the number one target. And the foundations that you're standing on, King David, they're about to be destroyed. And what can you do? What can the righteous do? End of verse three. They're saying this, David, run, leg it, get out of here, duck and cover and go into hiding. Flee like a little birdie. And this advice seems to be troubling King David. Look at verse one, that little line in between. How then can you say these things? to me. It's like David saying, my trust is in the Lord and I'm taking shelter and safety and refuge in him. How can you say to me to flee? It seems like such good counsel, doesn't it? It seems so sincere and so caring and plausible. But boy, do we need to be able to discern what's best for us in these days. Boy, do we need to be discerning, to listen to what we're hearing in these days. And I think there's a little assumption that stands behind what they're saying. And I think what they're saying is this to David, David, your safety is the number one thing. Above everything else, keeping you safe is the priority. And I think it's possible to idolise personal safety and security. Now, please don't hear me wrong. I'm not saying that we're not to respect social distancing because we must do that. I'm not saying that we shouldn't wear face masks where appropriate. We should be doing that as well. I'm not saying that we're not to take every measure possible to keep ourselves and our loved ones safe. But if behind closed doors, I'm just hunkering down, keeping myself to myself, concerned with keeping myself secure, terrified by what's going on out there, then am I really taking refuge in God? 
And I think it's possible that we can idolise personal safety and security too much that we prize it so highly, even above our relationship with God. Well, here's the contrast to the counsel that's ringing in the, in the king's ears. Look at verse 4. David says, The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is on his heavenly throne. He observes the sons of men. His eyes examine them. And we might be tempted to say, well, that's the problem, isn't it? God's just so distant. God's just so far away. He's, he's out there. He seems a million miles away. But look closer at what's being said. The psalmist is saying, the Lord is in his holy, holy temple, yes. He's on his heavenly throne, yes. But he sees, he observes what's going on. His eyes, his eyelids examine what's happening. You see, God is not just out there and distant, but he's out there and he's over everything and he's also close by. He's keeping a close watch. If you like, God's got his microscope out and he's looking at everything. He notices everything. Verse five, he examines the righteous. Not only the righteous, but also the wicked. And this shows, doesn't it, just how actively involved God is in his creation. He's not like a watchmaker that just wound up creation and let it go. No, he's intimately involved in his creation. He made it and he's sustaining it. His eyes are fixed on it. He's examining his people, those that he's created and what they're doing. Do we see? We can see in verse 7, we can see that God is passionately involved in his creation. For the Lord is righteous. He loves justice. He loves the acts of the righteous. And he goes on to say that the upright will see his face. Isn't that amazing? But also on the flip side to that, we see verse 5, that the Lord examines the wicked and he hates their actions. And verse 6 tells us that God will act decisively in judgment upon the wicked. And we've seen that time and time again now as we've been going through these psalms. Well, what's this psalm saying to us? Well, we need to be carefully discerning with what we're listening to in our ears at the moment. We need this big vision of verse 4, that God is on his throne, but he's also examining, he's seeing what's going on in his creation. And we need hope that one day we will all see his face. The Bible says no one's ever seen God and lived. This psalm says the upright will see God's face. And if we fast forward to the last book of the Bible, to Revelation chapter 22, we read there in verse 3 and 4 that there will be one day when God's kingdom comes down in full, though no longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and the Lamb will be in the city and his servants will serve him. Those that are there will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads. Isn't that amazing? No one's ever seen God and lived. Here's the promise that one day we'll see God's face. We'll be face to face with God. Wouldn't that be amazing? Isn't that a great hope for us to be looking forward to? One day, you and I will behold God and his face. Well, let's pray. Father, we pray for the days that we're in. We pray that you would help us to um, be wise and discerning as to what we're listening to. Give us hope in these days. Help us, Lord, to um, have a big view of you and your, your throne and your kingdom. Thank you, Lord, that you are in control. Thank you that you see and take note of all that's happening. Please make us to be those who trust in you. Help us to turn away from evil um, and help us to turn to you wholeheartedly. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.